And welcome to another video update for the Belmont Middle and High School Billing Committee. I am Diane Miller, member of the committee. I am here today with Bill Lavallo, our committee chair, and with Steve Mazzola, who is the director of technology for the Belmont Public Schools. Obviously, we're going to be talking about technology today, uh, an interesting topic. It really encompasses so much of our lives and also is a very important aspect of this building. Well, Steve, as the main uh, planner and, and uh, developer of the technology within our district, you had a major role in, in how the school is um, you know, showing the technology. So how does a school uh, build? Now, this school is designed for 50 years. How do you work something like that in uh, and make it last? Right. So, you know, 50 years is a long time, um, particularly for a school. And so... Um, if you think about it, we've, we've actually done this before. So when the old high school opened in 1970, uh, there were no computers, there was no network, um, there was no internet, and we really probably didn't get the first computer for another 15 years after the school opened. So we do know that things change over time. <clears throat> so fast forward to this school, you know, one thing that we looked at was, you know, what is our window for technology? Well, we know it's not 50 years but we do know that it's something in between. And so we started with a, um, with a time range of about 10 years. It's a little long in terms of technology, but it gives us a, um, a, a kind of a blank slate to start with. And so what we did is through the visioning meetings that happened uh, early on in the building process, uh, through meetings with individual staff, with administrators, with members of the building committee, and frankly, others in other districts who were building schools or just finished building schools. We got a really good idea of some of the technology that we wanted for this school. So we started to overlay that onto this blank slate, and that's how we came up with our basically our zero to 10 year vision, knowing that it may change along the way, uh, but it was a place to start. And then once we get to that point, then it's really just a series of five-year plans after that. So we are standing right now in a typical classroom, mm -hmm. and we are standing in front of the teaching wall, right, with this um, fancy monitor and technology system. If you want to walk us through how we arrived at this and what, what can it do? Right. So, so early on in the process, in the design process, um, we <clears throat> were looking at... Um, really what do we want for the display technology in the school and um, we knew that in the old school we had basically projector based smart boards and those had served us well for a number of years thanks for the to the foundation and um, but we decided that we had to reevaluate and one thing we did is we asked a vendor to come in and install uh, three systems in the old high school into a room, and, and we invited high school teachers and Chenry teachers to come over and try them out. One was a projection-based system, and two others were uh, flat-screen systems, much like the one that's behind me. And once we gathered that data, then we knew um, what we wanted, projector versus flat-screen. And as you can tell, we picked the flat-screen. And then after that, the decision was, well, how large? Because the... the um, Smart boards that were currently in the school were um, about 75 inches diagonal, and these are 86. One thing that we heard loud and clear from teachers is that they didn't want the glare of the projectors, and they wanted something that was a little larger than they had. They always felt as though, <clears throat> excuse me, that they were running out of room. And so that's why we went with the 86. We were very fortunate during the um, procurement process that these boards because technology was advancing in the glass manufacturing that the price came down as we were considering them. And so we, we really felt that 86 inch was a, was a good place. And so you mentioned high school teachers and middle school teachers, mm -hmm. Chenry teachers. So is this going to be the same setup in the middle school as well? It is. And, and as we looked for all technology throughout both sides of the school, we decided that um, there really wasn't much difference in terms of the technology that we would put into either side. 
So for example, all teachers have a laptop much like this, um, both sides, and also the same display, same Wi-Fi, um, many of the technologies are all the same. And the reason for that is, first of all, we liked the technology, so we think it needs to be throughout the school, but also um, it, in terms of support. It m makes much more sense to have everyone having the same devices, same manufacturer, so that when we go to support them, it's, it's um, easier for my team to do so. Well, Steve, uh, I'm leaning on something here, but it's mm -hmm. not just uh, a prop for me. So these are what, what you call, I guess, t uh, teaching tables, or uh, this is pretty mm -hmm. common, right? So th this, this ties into the way technology works and uh, moves around. Is, is this a popular thing that you're seeing in district, or is this is something that was really focused on the high school and middle school? Well, this was actually a result of one of our teacher focus groups. Interesting. And so they, they liked the idea of being able to not necessarily be at their desk or at the board entirely. They like to be maybe somewhere else in the room. So we were trying to envision how do we do that because we didn't have that platform in place in the other school. And the way it simply works is that the teacher can put the laptop on this podium. It has wheels, and they could be anywhere in the room and connect wirelessly to the board. Or if they choose, they could take the laptop and they could go to their desk and hardwire if they wanted to do it that way. So it gave them the option of being in multiple places depending on the class that they might be in. And I heard that students could connect to the board as well from where they're sitting. Right. If they wanted to project something that they've done. Right. So the students so, just simply, they have Chromebooks, they simply use Chromecast, probably something you're used to at home, same, same theory. And they can, if a teacher wants them to present their work, then they can do so. Fantastic. So in terms of connectivity and teenagers, mm -hmm. we all know that teenagers have a lot of devices and that Wi-Fi is very important. Mm -hmm. How is that working in the building? In, Do in, we have enough capacity? <laughs> <laughs> and, and we knew that this was, capacity is always an issue with Wi-Fi. Mm. You, you probably know that at home. Um, <laughs> and so mm. er, very early on in the design phase, what we did is we started gathering data about um, the Wi-Fi access at the old school. So how many students are hitting access points? How much bandwidth are they using? Time of day, things like that. How is it spread uh, around the school? And so we had that, that bucket of data. Um, then what we did is when we designed the network for this school, uh, we further segmented the network so that if I come in, I'm a teacher, I come in with this laptop, then I am automatically assigned to one part of the, net, of the wireless network. So that I, have, I have that pathway. If I am a student with the district issued Chromebook, then what will happen is they'll be put on another network. Um, and if I'm a guest, then I will be put on yet another network. And they all have their lanes and various permissions. Well, there's more that technology is, uh, more places is manifesting itself than just the, the class, mm -hmm. the typical classroom. We have uh, you know, visual display boards. We have uh, places in uh, the field house, cafeteria. The cafeteria. Um, you know, there's all, it's all connected, I guess. So I remember when we were, we were uh, going through the visioning, there was a big uh, focus on flexibility, but that permeated itself through into technology too. Uh, can you explain, you know, how that, that all works? And, and it's, it's everywhere. We just don't see it, right? Right. And we, and we knew when we started meeting with um, the architects and with the building committee that there's this need for a more adaptable network. And one way that manifests itself is that we now know that um, most everything in the building runs over the network, which is not true in our other schools. So for example, phones, security system, lighting, uh, heating right? controls, lighting controls, yeah. um, intercom, displays. We have, we have uh, occupancy sensors. In the occupancy yeah. sensors, those all run over the network. And that required us to design a network that was, first of all, was very robust, high speed, and expandable. So as the, let's, let's say that we change vendors for the lighting controls or the, or the lighting control vendor comes in with a new product, we have to ensure that the network, without doing any major modifications, can adapt to that kind of a plug and play scenario. And that was very important. And the last thing we did is we also built in redundancy. So if one segment of um, switch gear, for example, on this floor, if one went down, then it's a bit of a self-healing network where it will reroute to a backup network and presumably um, keep running. It's, it's phenomenal. 
So what about when the school building is being used um, by the community, by the mm -hmm. public, not necessarily for school? How does the technology translate to those types of functions? So we did um, acknowledge that, and we have this currently throughout the town, is we do have a guest network. So, um, and, the, and the reason why that, how that's different than, say, the network that I would jump on as a staff member is that when someone comes in with a device that we don't own, the network knows that it's not part of our network and simply doesn't allow it to touch internally to our network, but simply sends it out to the internet. And that's how we keep things secure and segmented for, for guest users. Okay. So another piece of our project is, um, is the district technology uh, office. And we, it's built in, it was built into the other high school. And we created a space for mm -hmm. that here, which you oversee. What goes on there? So we've, um, our operation has always been um, initially in supportive of all the school buildings. We happen to be here at the high school, but we have technicians that work throughout the district um, supporting smart boards, laptops, any technology piece, including the interfaces with HVAC systems, lighting controls, things like that. Um, so that's our primary focus, or I shouldn't say a primary focus, but most of our work occurs in those venues. However, um, Unlike a lot of towns, is we, the school department actually also runs the town-wide fiber optic network and all the switching gear. So we have a network staff here who is responsible for, um, uh, we have a project coming up where we have a new town library going in and we have to relocate fiber. That's done by our team in conjunction with the town IT department. Um, so anything that has to do with inter interconnectivity maybe between the high school and town hall, for example, or any or among buildings, that's something that we monitor and, and, and um, keep running. Do you have students that want to work for you part-time? <laughs> <laughs> so I always wonder, I go to my daughter to fix my right. technology problems sometimes. <laughs> right. But it's amazing what you do for the, to the town and out of this uh, you know, central area. And uh, I have to say it's a little bittersweet talking to you today because uh, after 15 years, you're retiring. Congratulations, you. by the way, you've earned it. And, uh, you know, we certainly recognize that you put your thumbprint on so much of Belmont with the technology, which is virtually unseen, but everyone relies on it. Mm -hmm. And I want to thank you for all of Belmont, I'm sure. I appreciate the work that you've done over the years, and I know that um, you as sort of the um, planner made uh, Belmont what it is today as far as how we could connect. And no one thinks about it until it doesn't work. Right, <laughs> so, right. We take it for granted. Yeah. So thank you for yes. joining us yeah, today. Great. Thank you, and, and thank you so much for joining us for this conversation today, and we will be back again soon with another conversation. Next up, we're going to be talking about the library, which we call the Learning Resource okay. Center, yeah. uh, so we look forward to talking with you soon. Thank you.